All right, guys, so the Jets lose. The Jets get humiliated in week one of the NFL season at home on 9-11 against the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know where to start, but before I do, I wanted to quickly say that the New York Jet fan base is flat out awesome. They went out, they represented, they packed the house, they spent their hard earned money to film at Life Stadium. They were loud, they sat in the rain. Unfortunately, the Jets couldn't deliver. The fans deserve better. The fans deserve better. To get apt to get killed like that on week one. And the thing that the thing that drives me up a wall is it looked like the same team as last year. It was mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake coming out of the gate and falling right on their face. I, in fact, I was I was actually at a sports bar. And I'm sitting here on my phone, jotting down notes, jotting down all of the first half mistakes. Let's just read quickly read off the list here. Corey Davis drop. A quick screen went right through Brees Hall's hands. Elijah Moore had a brutal drop. They ended up missing the field goal on that same possession. It was it was in the 40s. You know, it was definitely doable. It wasn't like it was a 57-yard field goal. You know, that should have been three points right there. Lawrence Cager falling down on the route, resulting in a Joe Flacco INT. Went right to him, right to the defender. What else? They had a penalty on a really big handoff, killing the momentum. Conklin had a drop on a bad pass from Flacco. Conklin had a- another pass knocked out on third down, uh, which, I mean, that, that could have continued to drive. With three timeouts, by the way, less than a minute to go in the half, they, you know, they ended up resulting or they ended up uh, with three points instead of, you know, maybe continuing the drive here. And the offensive line, especially in pass protection, was abhorrent. I mean, it was... It was hard to watch. Joe Flacco, 37 years old, can't really move around. He was running for his life back there. Running for his life. Guys were getting home. Each and every way, George Fan, I, I felt like struggled as well. Just a tough day offensively. Mistake after mistake, shooting yourself in the foot. And, you know, I hate to say it, but the mistakes somewhat continued. They slowed down in the second half, but they continued. Like a 20-yard punt from uh, Braden Mann. It literally looked like the, the ball just went horizontal right off his right off of his foot. I mean, what was that? Brees Hall had the fumble as they were driving down the field. Uh, Michael Carter with the touchdown drop in the end. But, I mean, the game was over at that point. So, it's not, you know, I, I really don't want to harp on that too much. Um, you know, I, the numbers might lie because there was a lot done in garbage time. But, man, the Jets offense was... It was awful. It was hard to watch. It was hard to watch. I was the only Jet fan in the, in the bar. Uh, there was a couple Ravens fans cheering and stuff like that. It was it was hard, for sure. The defense, on the other hand, though, I, I felt like looked really good. You know, I, look, I, I know Baltimore won, but guys were getting home. You know, Quincy Williams had that sack. Jermaine Johnson was in the backfield. Who else? Jacob Martin was in the backfield. Quinny Williams stepped up. I, I felt like overall in the first half of the game, the Jets deep Quan Alexander coming up with that huge, huge stop. Whitehead as well. I felt like the linebackers played pretty well in the first half. Same with the safeties. Um, and of course, you know, things broke down in the second half of the game. But at the same time, you you can't just you can't put the blame on the defense here, because I mean let's just let me find actually the let me pull up ESPN and read off these offensive drives for a second. It was putrid. You can't ask the defense to win you the game because the offense is just that bad. It is week one. I understand the weather uh, the weather wasn't perfect. I understand that the Jets had guys out, but you know what? The Ravens did too. No J.K. Dobbins. No Marcus Peters. No Travis Jones. No Ronnie Stanley. James goes down midway through the game. Hopefully he's okay yet to be carted off the field. But, you know, yes, the Jets had a couple of things working against them with the offensive line, the weather. I, I, I get it. But you cannot ask a defense to make stop after stop after stop after stop and the offense giving you nothing in return. There's just zero complimentary football. So I got the, the, um, the drives pulled up here. Let's quickly read off what they resulted in the first drive punt four plays next drive five plays punt third drive three plays interception next drive three plays punt next drive eight plays missed field goal next drive six plays punt field goal after that punt after that punt after that fumble after that turnover on downs and then a uh, touchdown in the end but both of those last drives kind of came in garbage time I, I mean let's let's be honest here um brutal absolutely brutal the offense it, 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 another thing too that kind of caught my eye 
what was going on with the roster? I felt like, you know, the tight end position, which was completely revamped this offseason, they hardly got looks. Um, I mean, with Uzama, like, just wasn't really much of a factor at all. Garrett Wilson, I think, he, I believe he only had six snaps in the entire first half. One pass that he really that he caught early in the game, he made a couple plays, was this close away from a first down. I mean, you drafted Garrett Wilson in the top 10. Let's get this guy out there. You know, especially coming off a of Corey Davis drop immediately. I, I felt like there was just it, missed opportunities was the name of the game here. And I I'm almost at a loss for words, to be honest, because it looked like the same exact team as last year. In fact, somebody actually made a joke on Twitter saying, hey, dude, instead of doing a recap video, just take one of your recaps from last year and upload it and, because it was the same thing. Same thing, issue after issue after issue, starting off slow, can't protect the quarterback. When the quarterback has time to make a pass, he's just not sharp, dropped passes, sloppy. And by the way, this is not to take credit away from the Baltimore Ravens. They went out there, they handled their business. Lamar Jackson was efficient, very, very difficult to bring down. Had a couple of uh, Herculean uh, effort plays that really resulted in um, you know big opportunities, big, big moments for that Ravens team. So credit Baltimore, they were dealing with injuries as well. Again, you know Marcus Peters, Stanley, J.K. Dobbins. These guys aren't you know uh, 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 pr elevated practice squad players. Those are stars. And they went out, they handled their business, they got the job done in a pretty hectic environment in MetLife Stadium because of the fans. So, um, again, the fans deserve better. It, that's just the bottom line. It, it, it is. Like, just to see this team come out of the gate like that and um, to look at the final score, I, I know it doesn't look that bad, but I gotta be honest with you, I, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. So... With that said, it wasn't all bad. You know, there is a small silver lining here, and that is the defense for a nice stretch in the first half, they made the game comp competitive. They gave the Jets offense opportunities to, to tie the game, to take the lead. Unfortunately, though, the offense could not handle business. They could not get in the end zone consistently. They couldn't move the ball consistently. They turned over the football a couple of times. It was brutal. It was brutal. So, you know, we look forward to next week, the Cleveland Browns. And by the way, I haven't even, I haven't even, I don't even know what the score of the Browns Panther game is. Last I checked, the um, Baker Mayfield ripped a pass downfield. It was like a 70 yarder to Robbie Anderson. I got to check the score. But, you know, we look ahead at Cleveland. If this defense can play like they did today, the Jets have got it. They, they have a shot. But it's up to the offense, though. Can they pick up the pace, protect the quarterback, deliver accurate footballs, not turn it over, establish drives, pick up first downs, and get in the end zone? It's up to the offense. It's up to the offense. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I apologize for this horrible performance. I do. I was I was so pumped up. I was so pumped up for today. Um... Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Jets.